I'm Jennifer Gilbert from Fox 45 News, and I'm so honored to be here with all of you today as we celebrate this very important milestone, the 75th anniversary of Kennedy Krieger Institute. So much to celebrate with this milestone, 75 years of visionary thinking, dedication to the community, a legacy of excellence that would not have been possible without all of you, the faculty and staff of the Kennedy Krieger Institute. As you arrive at this milestone, you really should pause to reflect on your success, helping individuals with disorders of the brain, spinal cord, and musculoskeletal system to unlock their potential through patient care, research, professional training, special education, and of course, the community programs. To tell you more, please join me in welcoming the President and CEO of Kennedy Krieger Institute, Dr. Gary Goldstein. Thank you, Jennifer, and thank all of you for coming to this celebration. To me, this institute is all about the people who work here, the patients we serve, the families, and the founders. Because we wouldn't have the vision, and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a small number of people who sort of set the stage, because they knew what was needed, and they knew this a long time ago. And I'm not going to go on, but I want to acknowledge three people who were and their memory, because none of, the, none of these three are with us any longer, but they are the force, I think, be, behind what we do today. So first, and, and two portraits hang as you, as you walk through here. Uh, one is Dr. Winthrop Phelps, and uh, this was his idea, uh, and this was in 1937 that the, that the Institute began, so that this is 75 years ago, this is our birthday, the 75th birthday, is because he came here to set up a school and a therapy program for children with cerebral palsy. And that's how it began. Now, the idea was it was not only to serve the children at hand that needed, that needed help in the families, but also to set the, set the standards for the country and for the world of how to take care of uh, and, and provide the best outcome for people with disabilities. He set that stage and he did that for 30 years. And uh, I want to acknowledge him because we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have a, 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 an institute focused on these problems, committed to both the education and the medical care uh, of, of, of uh, this population. The second person I want to acknowledge, and this comes much later in 1967, and, and um, uh, that's 45 years ago, and that's Donald, Dr. Arnold Caputi. Now, he is important to us and to the future and to the past of this institute because of his focus on professional training. And the idea was that we would be not only a center of excellence in providing care, and being innovative about the care, but we would bring ever more trainees, some of whom are here today, and many of whom over the years, there's now been thousands of trainees who populate the country and who are leaders in this field. So one of the products of, of uh, one of the goals of this institute is to train professionals, and Arnold was the, was the beginning of that. And then I'd like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Hugo Mosier. And Dr. Mosier, came here in 1976, and so that's 35 years ago. And what he brought was not only a continuation of the mission of service and training professionals, but he added to it contemporary science. In his field, it was genetics, but it was broader than that. It was to put a scientific basis, scientific discovery, to advance this field. So I think the combination of these three sort of founding fathers who were here at diff who overlapped and were here to set the stage for identifying the needs of a population to provide service of the highest quality, innovative service, to train professionals and to carry out research, that's what we're all about. They had the vision and we're lucky to be continuing that. Now I'm excited, not so much I am excited about the last 75 years, sort of, but I think 
The real excitement is the next 25, because I, I think we are on the verge of learning so much more about the basis of, of, uh, of, of the problems that, the, that we're working with here, that we're going to make major advances in intervention. And not that we're not doing that now, but it's going to be, there, there are just significant breakthroughs coming from uh, the new advances in neuroscience and imaging and genetics, and not going into detail on that. But this is what we're about. That's the combination. It's so dependent on people, and you're all the people. So thank you all for being here, and happy birthday to Kennedy Krieger. Now, these were the visionaries, but without the community support and without the community being behind us, we just couldn't exist. And Howard Miller, Dr. Mr. Miller, who's going to speak in just a second, represents that. He is the vice chair of our board. He's been involved in our long-range planning. And he and the other board members are our connection to the broader community of, of, of the state of Maryland, the, the companies in Maryland, the legislators in Maryland, without whose support we could not implement the, the, the mission uh, and vision of, of our founders and, and of ourselves. So with that, I'd like to uh, have you welcome uh, uh, Mr. Howard Miller. Thank you. I'm just one of 36 directors who love what they do and love what you all do here at Kennedy Krieger Institute. When I first visited the Institute, I was overwhelmed by the energy, the determination of the doctors, the researchers, the therapists, and the educators who were striving to make a positive impact on the lives of children. The disorders of the brain, spinal cord, musculoskeletal system it is because of the faculty and staff like you that has made this such a wonderful institution. This is a special place, as you know. We love what you're doing every day. When the opportunity came for me to become active on the board, I jumped at the opportunity. It's been a thrilling, long-term ride for me. We have people who have been serving as volunteers on our board for 20, 25 years. Uh, we have a past chairman of the board, and normally in organizations, a past chairman of the board, after he serves, he goes, he, he sort of fades away. Uh, we have a Mike Batza who's been on our board for 25, 30 years who helped put up the new buildings. He was a chairman 15, 18 years ago. He does it because of people like yourself. Mike, you're standing over here. Mike, raise your hand, Mike Batza. Mike Batza. Mike Batza never, never left Kennedy. People do it because of what you bring and the energy and the enthusiasm that you bring every, every day to the position. When we come and see people getting people off the buses with the same bright smile, oh, don't worry, let them stay here, with the bright smile and the enthusiasm, we go home and we're enthused in our business life. We get enthused to go out and raise new capital funds and new money for you. You all, you do a wonderful, marvelous job. I'm only here today to say thank you. This is a wonderful occasion. All of us, all of us look forward to the next 25, 50 years with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Howard and Gary, and thank you for your commitment and the work that you do. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you a parent, Peter Waldron, whose family has been helped here at Kennedy Krieger. Peter's son, Frankie, was diagnosed with autism seven years ago, and he has received treatment here at the Center for Autism and Related Disorders, and is also a current student in the Kennedy Krieger Lower School. It's my pleasure to introduce Peter Waldron, and Peter, thank you for sharing your story. In full disclosure, uh, a little nervous for today. I actually purchased my uh, speech off the internet. <laughs> I haven't read it yet, but I'm sure it's pretty good. So, I am truly honored to have been asked to speak to you on Kennedy Krieger's 75th anniversary and Employee Appreciation Day. I would like to start by saying thank you to each of you for your, ed your efforts and dedication to this amazing establishment. 
employee appreciation is something that is easily overlooked in some places, and I'm grateful to participate in this event. As an outsider, Kennedy Creamer seems to be more of a family than a job. I know that there's probably nobody in this world that loves every single part of their job. There's always some good and some not so good with every position. But it is with pure admiration that I stand before you today. You inspire me and so many others by the passion you bring to your jobs each day. I'd like to share with you how I learned about Kennedy Krieger. My wife Julie and I are truly blessed to have three wonderful children, Frankie, Lila, and Millie, all of whom have received services in one form or another from Kennedy Krieger. If I asked Dr. Rebecca Landa where she was on April 14, 2005, at 4 p.m., or what she was wearing that day, I'd probably get a blank stare from her. Frankly, I can't remember. <clears throat> Frankly, I can't remember where I was last Thursday or what I wore. For me, it was a Thursday. It was just a Thursday last Thursday. I went to work, had a good day, and went home to see my family. For Julie and me, on April 14, 2005, it's vividly etched in our minds. We brought our 18-month-old son, Frankie, to the car because he was showing some rather significant developmental delays. Being dyslexic, I was convinced that I had passed this trait onto our son and there's no real reason for any alarm. Oops. <laughs> uh, we, we, as we walked into the lower level of the Kramer building, we were greeted by a security guard, Darlene Jenkins, who asked for a high five from Frankie. She would later demand one from him every day as he passed her on his way to early achievements. Even on days when he was less than happy to be there, even when he would be throwing a full-blown tantrum, he would have to pause for a second, give Darlene a high five before he could go back to throwing his tantrum. <laughs> wow, he has really come a long way. We then met Dr. Landa and two other, team, uh, two other members of her team. I think of that day every time I would go into the Kramer building and pass that door. After a battery of tests, Dr. Landa came in and sat down with us. She informed us, informed us that Frankie had major developmental delays and several red flags of autism. Autism was a word that I had never focused on before and really had no understanding of. All I knew is our visions for Frankie were changed dramatically. For the record, Dr. Landa was wearing a light blue sweater and a pair of pants. <laughs> I remember it well, just as I remember other ran random details of that day, the same way you remember details of significant days in your lives. This day meeting will be forever etched in my mind, not because it was bad news, not because it was good news, because it was significant game-changing news. I remember the fear, the sadness, and the utter confusion as we sat talking to Dr. Landa about how we move forward. It was an empty feeling to say the least, and I know many of you have participated in similar Thursday afternoons, delivering or receiving such news. Dr. Landa and her team and the security guard, uh, this was just a Thursday afternoon appointment, a day at the office. Breaking difficult news to patients is most likely not an enjoyable part of her job or any of, your, or any of yours, but it's a part of the job nonetheless. Though this was just a Thursday afternoon at the office for each person we spoke with, that day, we were comforted by the compassionate and professionalism, professionalism of each person we met. They assured us that early intervention could make a significant impact on Frankie's life and potential, and they were right. These people, your Kennedy Krieger family, conduct themselves in this manner, not because of the situation or because we just received, we just got news that no one else in the world has ever received, but because it is the way you all do your jobs because your family here at Kennedy Krieger fosters and promotes a place of work that accepts nothing less. Some days are just Thursdays. To some of us, they are days that we'll never forget. Because we're handled with such compassion by someone truly passionate about their job, it made things easier for us to digest and absorb. When I look back on that day, it is not a day of sadness, is it, it is the, but as a day which was the base of the foundation which my family has built our lives. Joy and I have had great exposure to the various departments within Kennedy Krieger, from CARD to early achievements, sibling studies, 
parent training courses, the Fairmont, the Fairmont School Campus, outpatient occupational therapy, physical therapy. We've toured the various research centers unrelated to autism. I've had the pleasure of working on the War for Autism Committee for seven years, uh, where I've had great exposure to the PR department, the marketing department, and the development department. Trust me, I know the development department. <laughs> There are common threads that I've seen in each of the various facets of this establishment. Standout leadership, dedication to a, pro to a profession, and passion for helping others that is second to none. I've enjoyed meeting so many of you, working with some of you, and learning from all of you. Thank you for your co continued commitment to helping others, making us feel as a part of this amazing family, and providing each family that you touch daily with the strength and hope they need to help their child reach its potential. Thank you. Peter, thank you so much for that speech. Clearly, not from the internet, but from the heart. And, you know, I'm struck by, we know that people come here from all over the world, but how fortunate we are to have you right here in our own backyard. So I thank all of you for what you are to this community, as a parent in this community myself. We're so blessed to have you. We are here today talking about history, and you are about to get a special treat because there is really no better way to talk about the history of Kennedy Krieger than our next speaker. Betty Lou Driver was one of the very first children with cerebral palsy to be treated at the Children's Rehabilitation Institute, which as we've talked about was the predecessor of Kennedy Krieger Institute. She later became a physical therapist at the Institute and actually wrote an autobiography that was published in 1993 called We Can Win. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Miss Betty Lou Driver. anybody, but I am number one. <laughs> I would have patient a doctor's help. No one gave me any hope for doctor's help. And he said, to my parents, by the time she was 18 years old, she would live a normal life. And I was one of the first patients to be a, a patient at his school. It was one of the blessings of my life. After I left CRI, I was able to go to a public school in the second grade, I think I was the first one to go among normal children. And do you know what? They even liked me. <laughs> I graduated from college. I have a PT certificate. And in 1954, I came back to see 
Bibi on je veliko se je pe stav. Te vegen, a bož number one. After working thirty one years, I decided it was time to retire. But I had a bigger project to do. I wanted to write my autobiography. I wanted to do so to help the parents of handicapped children. It took me seven years to write the book. But you know, my golly, I got it done. <laughs> Today, I live a, a normal and busy life. I even drive a car. His name? It Joe. <laughs> and Joe and I do very well <laughs> together. I thank God for my family, for my friends, and I am a grateful for Kennedy Krueger. They have so much to offer. So much hope to give to parents. Today, Kennedy Krueger has a high commitment to carry on the legacy of Dr. Phil. And today, I stand before you and speak to you because of him. Thank you. a t-shirt. <laughs> the stories today really are about hope. That is the common theme and that is certainly uh, the story behind this next young man that you're about to meet, Matt Corson. He had a terrible ATV crash in 2006 and was told by doctors since he was paralyzed below his waist that he would probably never walk again. He was determined, his family was determined, and they did their research and they found Kennedy Krieger. And he went through some very intensive therapy here at the International Center for Spinal Cord Injury where doctors here told him there was, in fact, hope. So through that extraordinary determination, the hard work, the intense therapy, he made tremendous strides in his recovery. Maybe you've heard this story, but it is incredible that in May of last year, he was able to walk across the stage at UMBC and receive his college diploma.
Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Matt Corson. First off, it's, it's an honor to be here, it really is, to uh, see so many faces and the impact you've all made on my life. Uh, as Jennifer said, my name is Matt Corson. I had an ATV accident. Uh, in this accident, I had a, it, re it resulted in a spinal cord injury. My local physician told me that there really wasn't any hope for me. But then I found Ken Kennedy Krieger. <laughs> when I came to Kennedy Krieger, one of the first things I did was keep a blog. And one of the first entries in my blog read this. My therapy at Kennedy Krieger is more than I could ever ask for. This place is incredible and it's full of hope. There are so many heroes at this place. To see the patients work with the therapist at a common goal gives me that extra motivation. I can't wait to go back to therapy. And I did. Many of my therapists are in attendance. I continued to go back to therapy, and the progress I, could, I continued to make never ended. It started with the wiggle of a toe and resulted in uh, eventually in a walk across stage. I know that this progress could not be positive without the impact of each and every one of you. Uh, I know that with my doctors, my therapists, you know, I wouldn't be here today. Kennedy Krieger started as a therapy institute. It quickly grew into my heart as a family. I will always hold a special place in my heart for this special family. In closing, I want to thank each and every one of you for the impact that you have made on my life. Uh, without this impact, the, the potential that you unlocked would not be there today. Thank you very much for, the, for everything you have done. Thank you, Matt. We wish you the best and we're happy you're calling Baltimore home now. All right, what's a birthday party without singing, right? Ready to sing? All right, time to sing happy birthday. I want to hear everybody, loud. by our friends at Charm City Cakes in honor of the Institute's anniversary. What a great way to celebrate. In just a few minutes, we are going to be serving refreshments right down the hall, the hallway leading toward the Kirby Center. If you get a chance, please make sure you walk around and see the photo displays that are set up that really do tell the history of Kennedy Krieger. And also, make sure when you get back to the office, check out the homepage for the 75th anniversary website where you will find more pictures, videos and more highlights of the history of the Kennedy Krieger Institute. Thanks to all of you for coming today. Thanks for all that you do and enjoy the rest of your day. And here's to the next 25 years.